a question a lot of my viewers ask, and frankly, a lot of my friends in real life ask me, you know, hey, Asul, you've been fortunate. You've worked with a lot of millionaires. You've worked with a half a dozen billionaires. Okay, so what have you learned from there? What is the secret to getting wealthy? And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about one of the core principles of the secrets of getting wealthy. And you know, there really are no shortcuts. You know, I would say the three principles are, no matter how much you make, spend less than you earn, one house and one spouse. And we'll, we'll, we'll leave the second two uh, for a later video. Let's talk about the first one, spending less than what you earn. How do you save more? Uh, so, and, and some of these are gonna seem trite, but it's, it's these good habits that we put in place that allow us to start saving small dollars that can build up to large dollars. And towards the end, I'm gonna share with you, the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you the thing that I think will move the needle for you the most. But first I need to go through some of the foundation. So the first thing is we're all different. You know, so you spend money the way that makes you feel comfortable and allows you to enjoy the journey the, the best, the most. Um, I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I've seen and some of the things I incorporate in my life. And the first one, again, you're gonna laugh, but you know, oftentimes when I get together with my friends, you know, it's just super easy to say, hey, let's grab dinner together, let's grab breakfast together. And at least in my town, you know, I'm looking at at least $50 to do that. So, you know, some of my friends would say, I never order uh, an alcoholic beverage at dinner. That's how I save money. And that's great. For me, I really prefer to go out for a cup of coffee um, or, you know, out for at a, a bakery and, and grab a bagel or a muffin with my friends as opposed to going out to a restaurant. You know, coffee, I really enjoy going out for a well-made cup of coffee and typically that costs me five, six, seven dollars as opposed to 30, 40, 50 dollars. Uh, so, so that's the first one. And again, you know, the saving $50 a week make a difference? Yes, yes it does. That's $200 a week. You save $200 a week, uh, I'm sorry, that's $200. Uh, uh, one dinner is uh, $200 a month it saves you. So that's $2,500. And you'll see as we go through these, it very quickly adds up to $10,000 or more. Okay, the next one, and this is, this is one that I've gotten some flack, but it tends to be a needle mover. And it tends, in my opinion, is the least sacrificial way in order to be able to save additional money. And frankly, it's a lot easier for, for many people than, you know, not ordering a beer at dinner. Uh, and that is buying a really nice car, but buy it used, don't buy it new. So go ahead and drive a nice car, drive a car that you know has the latest electronics, if that's what's important to you. But really see, can you pick, can you buy that used as opposed to paying new? Because the average American spends about $1,200 a month between their car payments, their fuel, their car insurance, now that's for a household. I shouldn't say average American. The average household, that's for two cars. But you can see where that very quickly adds up. Now, some people take that to an extreme and say, well, you know, maybe my spouse and I should share a car. Don't do that. Because you know what's more expensive than two cars? It's, it's, uh, it's getting a divorce is more expensive than two cars. Which, remember those three rules. Save, uh, spend less than you earn, one house and one spouse. Uh, so that's gonna break rule number three, which can be quite expensive. Okay, the, the next one on the list. And again, this is, this is gonna sound silly, but you know, use the library. I'm a big fan of books. I believe in keeping a positive state of mind. Uh, so I read a lot of books. I listen to a lot of books. And you know what? The library is a great place to get that. Uh, they have, you can get, the, most libraries have the equivalent, it's something different, but it's similar to Kindle, where you can get books electronically. So use your library, your taxes are paying for it. I want you to, to, to take advantage of that. Another one is just the concept of waiting. If, if you see something online, right? We all spend a lot of time online now. We're being advertised to online. They have a lot of information on us and they, 
they can target us very, very cleverly. And if you see something that you want, you know what? Wait three days, the 72 hour rule, wait three days and see if you still want it. And the other thing is, is don't fall for Amazon's trick where they, where they say, oh, you don't want it now, we'll put it on your list. You know what, if I still want it in a week, I don't need it on my list, I'll remember. And if I don't remember it, it probably means that, uh, that I didn't need it that much. So that's, that's another thing is, is, is use the library, take advantage of that. Um, and then just, you know, look at your own life and say, what are some ways I've shared with you some things that I do, the, the library, uh, another one that adds up pretty quickly. I shared, you know, going out for coffee as opposed to dinner. And I think that probably saves me about $200 a month. Another one that I think saves me over uh, $200 a, a, a month is bringing my lunch to work. Um, you know, it used to be I could get a decent lunch near the office for $10. Uh, now, after the last three or four years, it seems like all the $10 options are now $15. Um, so bringing your own lunch to work can save you $75 a week. Um, that's a lot of money. And again, you know, you do that, that adds up to like $4,000. So, so these are some ideas, some specifics that I want to share with you. And these are what work for me. These are what I've seen have worked for other people. But I want to share with you the thing that I think moves the needle the most. We're all different. You spend your money on the things that you enjoy the, the most. But the thing that really works for almost all of us is, is this idea of this budgeting process that's called the 50-30-20. And the idea is we spend 50% of our take-home pay. So this is our gross pay, lesser taxes. Um, so our gross pay, not including what we put in our 401k or anything, it's just your gross pay, less taxes. 50% of that's budget for needs. Housing, your utility bill, um, a car to get back and forth to work, food on the table. Um, so those are our needs. And then we have our wants, and that's where the 30% comes in, 30% on our wants. So, you know, um, I've, I've got a coat that I really like, right? It's uh, I'm not sponsored by Patagonia. Uh, Yves Chenard, if you want to sponsor me, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be glad to be sponsored by Patagonia. But you know, this coat is 10 years old, maybe even 15 years old. Could I get another coat? Probably. But that's going to fall into a want, not a need. So 50% on your on your wants, 30% on your needs. And then the idea, the other 20% goes to savings. Now, a lot of us learned a rule of thumb that you save 10%, you're going to be fine. And I wish that that was the case, you know, but that 10, save 10% rule was really created when retirement providing for your retirement, there were three legs to that stool supply, providing the support for your retirement. You had Social Security. We still have Social Security now. Hopefully we'll have it in the future. I believe we will. Then we have the money that we save on our own, but then we also used to have a pension. And for most of us, there is no pension anymore. So now our three-legged stool has really become a, a two-legged stool and we have to balance very carefully. So savings becomes much more important. So saving 10%, I don't think is sufficient anymore. I think we need, unfortunately, to plan on closer to 20%. So that's the 50, 30, 20 rule. And, and here's my challenge for you. I think once a year, it's healthy for all of us to really cut back and to try to live just for 30 days, for one month, Try to live, see what you can do just living on your needs. You know, we all did that at the start of the pandemic because frankly, we couldn't spend money. But I think once a, once a year, it's good to remind ourselves once a year for 30 days, we can do anything for 30 days, what really our needs are versus our wants. It's almost like when you go on a diet, right? I don't like to track calories, but it's good to kind of look at that once a year and see where you're at. I think it's also good to consider watching this video here where I talk about why it's important to look poor. It's kind of the graduate level of this video. 
I'll see you in there. And it, it's why it's important to look poor. That's how millionaires are made. I'll see you in there. Bye-bye.